and welcome to Online Church at Baker Memorial United Methodist Church in St. Charles. I'm Pastor Kim Neeson. On behalf of myself and Pastor Maria Zajac, we welcome you to worship today. Happy Palm Sunday. Hosanna. Hosanna in the highest. Today, Pastor Mary Zajac will be continuing our sermon series on this Palm Sunday. And we have our lay leader, Kathy Ruth, who will be our liturgist. And our musicians are Rob Campbell and Sam Wyatt. We give a shout out to Mandy and Rob Hale, as well as Michelle Claney, for all the behind the scenes work that you do each week. But we have celebrations and invitations that we want you to be aware of. We celebrate with the Morgan Mabray family as they became members last week in our in-person service. Welcome to the church. Well, Wednesday is our Faith, Food, and Fun event. That is an intergenerational event, and you won't want to miss out. It is from 5.30 to 7. Then Holy Week continues on Thursday for Monday Thursday at Batavia at 7 p.m., our Good Friday service at 7, and three different options of services for Easter Sunday. We hope you can make it to one of them, or we'll see you right here online that day as well. We have sent out some uh, letters for our Easter giving. We thank you in advance for your generosity, what God has so freely given to us that we give back for the mission of God's work in and through Baker Memorial United Methodist Church. Spiritual formation is so important, so you see there on your screen that you can join any one of three classes for adults starting April 16th. We will have a charge conference on Monday, April 7th, and that will be in person in the sanctuary at 7 p.m. Last but not least, ladies, we'd love to see you at movie night. You can register there with the tiny URL on your screen. If you have a candle in your home, we encourage you to go ahead and light that now. And let's go ahead and pray. Oh, good and gracious God, we come before you and we celebrate that you are Lord of all as we are together here on this Palm Sunday. Lead us to follow you in such a way that is pleasing unto you. So open our hearts and our minds as we worship this morning. It's in Jesus' name we pray. And all God's children said, Amen. We will continue now with our worship as we listen to this beautiful music. Hosanna, loud Hosanna, the little children sang. Through pillared court and temple, the lovely anthem rang. To Jesus who had blessed them, close folded to his breast, the children sang their praises, the simplest and the best. Hosanna in the highest, that ancient song we sing, for Christ is our Redeemer, the Lord of heaven, our King. Oh, may we ever praise him with heart and life and voice, and in his blissful presence eternally rejoice. A reading from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 21, verses 1 to 11. When they had come near Jerusalem and had reached Bethphage at the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two disciples, saying to them, Go into the village ahead of you, and immediately you will find a donkey tied and a colt with her. Untie them and bring them to me. If anyone says anything to you, just say this, The Lord needs them, and he will send them immediately. This took place to fulfill what had been spoken through the prophet, saying, Tell the daughter of Zion, Look, your king is coming to you, humble and mounted on a donkey, on a colt, the foal of the donkey. The disciples went and did as Jesus had directed them. They brought the donkey and the colt and put their cloaks on them, and he sat on them. A very large crowd spread their cloaks on them, and he sat on them. 
the crowds that went ahead of him and that followed were shouting, Hosanna to the son of David. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest heaven. When he reached Jerusalem, the whole city was in turmoil, asking, Who is this? The crowds were saying, This is the prophet Jesus from Nazareth in Galilee. This is the word of God for all people. Thanks be to God. Many thanks to Kathy for reading our scripture today. As we prepare to reflect upon it, I ask you to pray with me. Let us pray. Gracious God, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be a holy and pleasing offering to you as we continue our journey through Lent to Easter and through death to resurrection. We pray in the name of the risen one. Amen. Well, historians suggest that there were actually two parades in Jerusalem on the day that we now call Palm Sunday. One parade was the one that we read about the followers of Jesus waving palms and shouting Hosanna. We didn't get to hear about the other one in the scripture, but my understanding is that it happened every year as the Jewish celebration of Passover approach. Historians estimate that about 200,000 Jewish people traveled to Jerusalem for the Passover celebration each year. That means that the city, which was very large by ancient standards with only about 50,000 permanent residents, became exceptionally crowded with five times the normal population. Now with so many people gathering in one place, along with the uneasy situation of the most holy city of Judaism being under the government of the Roman Empire, it isn't surprising that the Roman government would want to remind people who exactly was in charge here. So they held a military parade at the beginning of the Passover celebration. The Roman governor Pilate rode in with his imperial guard to ensure that the celebration would in fact be peaceful. Now, normally there would only have been one parade in Jerusalem on that day, but that year there were two very different parades. It, in a sense, forced the people at the time, and still us today, which one of these parades are we willing to attend? Which leader are we going to follow? What are we going to shout out? Are we going to say something on the order of Hail Caesar? Or are we going to shout out Hosanna? Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Now, as usual, the easy answer would be that we would follow Jesus. However, like we talked about last week when Jesus raised Lazarus, that is the untested answer for most of us. Just like we can only choose to trust Jesus as completely as we can imagine needing to trust him, so too we can only follow Jesus as far or as boldly as we can imagine that we might actually have to. Most of us have never actually experienced a deep conflict in our choice to follow Christ. We haven't had to experience the loss of friends or family ties because we chose to follow Jesus. We haven't had to give up our rights and privileges to choose discipleship. And we haven't had to be particularly brave in our followership. If we had to risk losing something, our response about which parade we would want to attend might come a little bit more slowly. Pilate's parade would have been very impressive. He would have been dressed in military regalia, riding on a strong and beautiful mount. Dominic Crossan, a well-known Christian historian, would have described it this way. He said he would have been accompanied by a cavalry on horses as well as foot soldiers, and all would have been decked out in leather armor, helmets, weapons, harnesses, and carrying golden eagles mounted on poles. The sun would be glinting on metal and gold, and the street would be filled with sounds of marching feet, creaking leather, clinking bridles, and the beating of drums. We also know that Pilate would have come in the name of a god, and that god would have been the divine emperor Tiberius. And Pilate's objective would have been to strike fear in the hearts of the people, so that no one would even dare to be anything but peaceful. Jesus's parade would have been the opposite in a lot of ways. There certainly weren't any marching feet, clanking weapons, or impressive regalia. However, there were some features of Jesus's parade that were, in my estimate, more important and more beautiful than Pilate's parade. First, Jesus rode on a donkey. And while some people seem to think that's a sign of poverty or peasantry, in fact, it isn't either. Jesus was acting out an important prophecy from the book of Zechariah. Listen to these words carefully, and I think you'll see that riding in on a donkey was not a peasant's choice at all. Zechariah chapter 9, verses 9 to 10 goes like this. 
Rejoice greatly, O daughter Zion. Shout aloud, O daughter Jerusalem. Lo, your king comes to you, triumphant and victorious is he, humble and riding on a donkey, on a colt, the foal of a donkey. He will cut down off the chariot from Ephraim and the war horse from Jerusalem, and the battle bow shall be cut off, and he shall command peace to the nations. His dominion will be from sea to sea and from the river to the ends of the earth. Acting out the triumphal entry of Zechariah was a strong statement about who we need to follow. It was a declaration of kingship, a declaration that peace does not come through military might, but through God. The sounds at the Jesus Parade were also important and symbolic. His followers weren't shouting out Hosanna, which by the time in history was a word that could have meant a few different things. They were shouting out, Hosanna, blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. And they weren't thinking about the Emperor Tiberius as Lord at all. In the Roman understanding, there were a lot of gods, so Tiberius wouldn't have minded sharing the title. But this shout from the Jewish people left no room for Tiberius to be anything but human. This shout came from the followers of the one and only God. In addition, they weren't just shouting out Hosanna, they were shouting out Scripture. Specifically, they were shouting out words from Psalm 118, which was one of the scriptures recited at Passover. The whole psalm is a vote of confidence in the power of God to rescue God's people from oppression, danger, and captivity. It, like the whole celebration of Passover, looked back to when God freed the Hebrew people from slavery in Egypt and declares that God stands ready to free his people again. We heard the last verses of the psalm in our reading from the Gospel of Matthew today, but a few verses er earlier, here is what it says. All nations surrounded me, but in the name of the Lord I cut them off. They surrounded me, surrounded me on every side, and in the name of the Lord I cut them off. They surrounded me like bees, they blazed like a fire of thorns, and in the name of the Lord I cut them off. I was pushing hard so that I was falling, but the Lord helped me. The Lord is my strength and my might. He has become my salvation. These are glad songs of victories in the tents of the righteous. The right hand of the Lord does valiantly. The right hand of the Lord is exalted. The right hand of the Lord does valiantly. I shall not die, but I shall live and recount the deeds of the Lord. The Lord has punished me severely, but he did not give me over to death. I've heard people say that the same people who shouted Hosanna at Jesus' prey turned around and shouted crucify him later in the week but I truly doubt that many people actually did that. Being at Jesus' parade meant something to the people who were there. They had already made a bold choice about who to follow. Now that passage leaves us with questions. Which parade are we willing to attend? Which leader will we choose to follow when we have to make that choice? Are we really willing to shout out Hosanna and blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord with all of the meaning that that shout brings? I don't know about you, but if I want to speak truthfully, I need to pause before I answer those questions. And as I pause, I find myself needing to think back to past decisions, wondering whether my past actions actually support me saying that I would choose to follow Jesus at his parade. How often, I wonder, have I chosen worship over other events? And how deeply have I placed my trust in God when the powers of this world threaten to overwhelm me? Am I comfortable enough practicing my faith in public to show up at such a public display of love and trust for God? I even wonder, do I know the words and meanings on scripture enough that I would know what I was actually doing? Every past action in our lives was a small decision at the time. But now we can see that all of those small decisions become a training program for the bigger decisions that are going to come to each of us someday, like it came to Jesus' followers then. By the grace of God, I know which parade I want to be ready to go to. I want to be ready to go to the Jesus parade. So I practice by making small decisions in that direction now. How about you. During Lent, we've been walking with Jesus through his ministry as crucifixion comes closer and closer. Each Sunday, we've paused to notice who Jesus is interfacing with and what we can learn from those interactions ourselves. 
We encounter the devil himself trying to tempt Jesus to accept human glory over God's glory. And we discovered something we need to remember and rely on. The power of evil is always less than God's power for good. Jesus dismissed the devil with ease, so we do not need to be afraid. We encountered Nicodemus as he came to Jesus at night to see if he could understand who he was. And we watched Nicodemus walk away confused about what it means to follow Jesus. For us, it was a reminder that faith understanding is not always in the hands of the powerful and the intelligent. Faith is a gift from God that can be difficult to fully receive. It takes time, patience, and willingness to walk in the light to become a disciple. We also encountered a most unlikely disciple in the Samaritan woman by the well. She went and told the whole community of Sychar that she had met the Lord and many came to know and follow Jesus, even though they didn't look like they had the right pedigree to be his disciples. From her, we learned that God will use even the least likely people if they are willing followers. We should never think that God would not accept a particular type of person as a disciple or evangelist. Two weeks ago, we experienced the many responses people had when Jesus gave sight to a blind, a man born blind and realized that we were all in fact blind and in need of Jesus' healing. And finally, last week we watched as Jesus encountered two sisters with very different experiences of faith in the midst of tragedy. Martha sought deeper understanding while Mary simply fell apart and wept in grief. And through that encounter, we saw Jesus meet two very different people right where they were in their hour of need, growing our trust that he will in fact do the very same for us. Each of these encounters along the way has challenged us to grow in our understanding and our ability to place our trust in Jesus. Together they have brought us to the bigger question of today. Are we ready to shout, Hosanna, blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord, when and if that time comes? The small decisions we make throughout our lives are our training grounds. We need to practice choosing to join in and choosing to speak out in our faith today so that by the grace of God, we will in fact be ready when that time comes. Amen. I invite you to ponder these thoughts as we hear this beautiful solo sung by Rob Campbell and accompanied by Sam Wyatt. Exalted, the King is exalted on high. I will praise Him. He is exalted, forever exalted, and I will praise His name. He is the Lord, forever His truth shall reign. Heaven and earth. Rejoice in his holy name. He is exalted, the king is exalted on high. He is exalted, the king is exalted on high. I will praise him. He is exalted, forever exalted, and I will praise his name. Rejoice in his holy name. He is exalted, the king is exalted on high. He is the shall reign. Heaven and earth rejoice in his holy name. He is 
exalted, the King is exalted on high. He is exalted, the King is exalted on high. It's at this time that we come together in prayer. Prayer is important to us at Baker Memorial United Methodist Church, and you are important to us. It's a way that we connect with each other and a way that we connect to God. So if you have a prayer request or a praise, we would love to hear about that. If you go to bakermemorialchurch.org, you can see on the online church button where you can leave your prayer request, as well as let us know that you are worshiping here today. And also there is an online giving button. We thank you in advance for your generosity in giving to Baker Memorial United Methodist Church to further God's kingdom. It's now that we come together and pray. Would you please join me? Oh, holy God, we come to you this day of Palm Sunday, where many shout out and pray, saying, Hosanna in the highest, meaning save us while there are others that deny you or turn away from you. As we journey to the cross this week, lead us, comfort us, and be with us in our joys, our celebrations, our sufferings, and our heartaches. We praise you that you are the God who saves now and forever. Today we celebrate the many mystery ministries in and through Baker Memorial UMC, where we see your hand and your grace upon us. We're grateful for the purchase with a purpose as many fair trade vendors were supported. We give praise for the capital campaign work that has been done with the floor at Cedar Avenue and the asbestos abated, the floors in Wiley looking beautiful for amazing ministries and fellowship to happen. We give thanksgiving for the countless hours of volunteers and staff, as well as the contributors to make all of this happen for your glory. We thank you for your unending love and grace when at times we may find it hard to receive. We give thanks that you are the God of comfort and peace, and we can turn to you when we feel anxious, down, depleted, and uncertain in our own lives and of the world around us. There are times in our lives when it may be difficult for us to shout Hosanna, and we thank you that you are with us during those times. We lift the world concerns up to you. We specifically pray for those affected by the Nashville shootings. Our hearts ache for all involved and pray for your comfort to surround that community. We thank you that you are the God who brings justice to an unjust world and you call us to follow your lead, to stand in the gap, to be a voice for the voiceless and to see the needs around us. Lead us to a place on this journey to the cross where we can have the strength and desire to follow you with all that we have. We pray all of this together in the name of Jesus Christ the prayer that he taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Have a blessed Palm Sunday. Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Go knowing that you have a Lord who is Lord of all as we begin this Holy Week journey. See you next week. <laughs>